Earth, Proxima Centauri B, and three different spaceships. Slow, fast, and beyond fast. Engage. The generational ship chooses size over speed. It is a mechanical cathedral, a world in motion, carrying entire cities worth of cargo on a century-long voyage. Everything needed to build a new world. The cryosleep ship is a feat of biological engineering, smaller, faster, but sacrificing cargo and living space, carrying only the essentials. The warp drive ship chooses speed over everything else. It bends the laws of physics. It is tiny and instantaneous, carrying barely more than its crew. Which ship arrives best prepared to colonize? Which is the most likely scenario? And does technology always move forward in a straight line? Three ships, three futures, and the path chosen will define everything about humanity's arrival. Nuclear fusion drives the generational ship forward. Traveling at a cruising speed of 4.24% the speed of light, the generational ship takes 100 years to reach Proxima Centauri B. This is a migration of an entire civilization. 1,800 passengers board from Earth. 4,572 arrive at the destination. Seven generations live and die aboard the vessel. Three born on Earth and four born on the ship. The passengers age in sync with the universe. It is a journey through space and through time itself, unlike the other two ships. The generational ship is a complete biosphere wrapped in metal. There are multi-level aeroponic vertical farms. DNA, data, and seed storage vaults preserve genetic heritage. Schools, virtual reality theaters, medical facilities, and birth centers create the infrastructure of a functioning society in space and on a new world. Cultural drift is unavoidable on such a journey. A civilization born in metal hulls evolves differently than the one that launched it. Bacterial populations in this enclosed system are carefully managed to prevent mutations and the collapse of the ship's ecosystem. Strict reproduction guidelines dictate family size and timing. Frozen sperm and eggs from Earth, combined with artificial wombs, form an alternative backup. Traveling further away from Earth, the culture, beliefs, rituals, they all shift across the generations. The passengers will make the new planet their own. The generational ship arrives prepared. Space shuttles wait in the hollow core. Cargo is vast. Technology, soil, genetic libraries, knowledge, culture. Elders with the wisdom of experience, adults in their prime, and children ready to grow up on the new world. This is not just a journey. It is the preservation of life. But what if a generational ship sets off on its 100-year journey and a warp drive ship is built and launched? Who reaches the planet first? The Encyclopedia of the Future. Colony Genetic Threshold. The minimum sustainable population number required for genetic diversity in off-world colonies. 5,000 individuals to maintain long-term reproductive viability and genetic diversity. Cryobiology the study of how low temperatures affect living beings. Focusing on applications in extending human and animal lifespans and using cryopreservation for space travel. The cryosleep ship trades long-term colonization for speed. With passengers in suspended animation, the ship needs 90% less space for habitat mass, which are the resources for habitats, life support, supplies, and living spaces. Nuclear fusion also drives the cryoship forward, but it's able to travel at 21% the speed of light versus 4.24% for the generational ship. Acceleration is longer, using more fuel. The journey is completed in 20 years, not 100. And the passengers, deep in their interstellar hibernation, will only age five months. Compared to the generational ship, where lifetimes pass, this is a nap. 33 cryopods transport the passengers in micro-environments, each a tiny Earth. The pods administer pre-medication cocktails to relax the travelers. 
an induction agent is then injected. It is a synthetic compound that slowly reduces metabolic rate, body temperature, and consciousness down to the bare minimum. The pods cool slowly to avoid hypothermia, then seal to create a controlled microenvironment. Brain activity has been minimized, conserving energy. The passengers do not dream. Interstellar hibernation, or suspended animation, mimics animal hibernation, what biologists call torpor induction. Bears, bats, bees, frogs, snails, hedgehogs, and the Arctic ground squirrel, they all provide the biological blueprint for inducing humans into a cryosleep. Going into hibernation becomes a way of stopping time. Families on Earth can volunteer to join the passengers in suspended animation. They are put into their own interstellar hibernation back on the blue planet to be woken up at the same time across the cosmos. But they will each sleep for a different amount of time. Traveling at 21% light speed, time on board the 20-year journey passes slower. 167 extra days pass on Earth. The cryoship arrives at Proxima Centauri B. The awakening process reverses hibernation. Body temperatures are slowly increased. Post-hibernation medications ensure the heart can pump blood around the body. The sleep pods act as ventilators, assisting breathing until passengers can take over. Mild stimulants gently elevate consciousness. The pods' light and sound systems provide gentle sensory stimulation. The passengers develop a distorted perception of time. They experience disorientation, confusion, and muscle weakness as their bodies remember how to be alive. The 20 years have passed like waking up from a night's sleep. The cryo ship arrives prepared for deployment. Robotic systems have already set up a base ahead of the crew's arrival and awakening. Cargo is compact and there are only 33 people. But their knowledge is fresh and their memories, their culture, is tied to Earth. The Encyclopedia of the Future The Gravitational Settlement Period The time required for a human to physically recover and adjust to the gravity of a planet or space station or asteroid station after spending time traveling in weightlessness. For more sci-fi and to join the Encyclopedia of the Future, become a Venture City member on Patreon. Exotic matter and negative energy create a wave for a warp ship to surf. At a cruising speed of warp 6, traveling at 392 times the speed of light, the travel time to Proxima Centauri B is 3 days, 22 hours, and 48 minutes. The passengers will not experience any time dilation. Time on Earth moves at the same rate. For a generation ship, the journey is beyond a lifetime a nap for the passengers on a cryo ship, and on a warp ship it is as if stepping through a door. The technological leap from fusion rockets to warp drives is the difference between stone tools and computers. The warp ship represents mastery over the structure of space-time and reality. The ship does not move through space, it moves space itself. The first warp ships are unmanned, they are test missions, probes sent to Proxima Centauri B for scouting. The first humans will be few, seven test pilots with limited life support prepared to jump through space. On board the warp drive ship, a matter-antimatter reactor, the most energy-dense reactions known in physics, creates the high energy levels needed to power and run the onboard particle accelerator. Inside the room-sized accelerator, Particles are accelerated to near light speeds and collide, creating exotic matter. Normal matter is like a bowling ball pushing down on a trampoline. Negative energy and exotic matter lifts it up into a bubble. A warp spaceship uses exotic matter and negative energy to create a bubble around it, squeezing the space in front and expanding the space behind, creating a wave. The spacecraft can surf over space at faster than light speed, like a surfer who paddles versus a surfer who rides a wave. Inside the bubble, the seven passengers feel no acceleration and no turning. There is no sense of motion as the universe rearranges itself around them. Looking out of the windows, 
Beyond the bubble, everything is distorted. Stars and galaxies are bent. There are even multiple visions of the same object. Only days have passed, and the ship has dropped out of warp. They have reached the safe zone. The spaceship now transitions to sublight travel, using its fusion engine to travel the 1 hour and 24 minutes to enter the orbit of Proxima Centauri b. The passengers arrive at the planet as short-term researchers, carrying only the essential life support needed for the two-day long stay. A warp drive ship is a light speed miracle. But technology does not always move forward. Sometimes it zigzags or retreats. Complex solutions fail where simpler ones endure. Biotechnology can be unpredictable. Machines often outlast social stability. Great civilizations don't always move forward. Could the slow, patient, generational ship represent humanity's path to the stars, its passengers living and dying between worlds? The cryo ship represents humanity's faith in biological mastery. The warp ship demands breakthroughs in physics, needing the discovery of new forms of matter and energy. It represents humanity's refusal to accept limits imposed by the universe, creating gods who leap across the cosmos. But if there is no journey, only departure and arrival, what happens to the meaning of space travel and the human relationship with time and distance? In the end, we might build all three. Who will we be? when we reach the new world. The third volume of the Encyclopedia of the Future is now available on Patreon. Beneath the skies of Mars, retiring astronomer Malcolm Kalis witnesses his last Martian sunset. As he packs for his journey home, he tells stories of ice moons and what it means to be humanity's most distant explorer. A collection of written short stories is coming soon.